Yo, what is up YouTube? James back here and welcome back to another episode of VGC 17 Backtrack Battles. Today we are using the same team we've been using for the past few days, Dracov's team of Slowpoke, Smeargle, Hariyama, Torko, Lilligan, and Nihiliga. Let's get started with some battles and yeah, I think I've been saying this for the past couple of episodes, but this team has been really fun. Um, of course, we w this is the second to last episode with this team and then we have a brand new team. And that team will be, um, you know, something more competitive. But we got Javi or Javi or however you want to say it from Spain. I might even get it wrong. We got the team of Tapu Koko, Mandibus, Tapu Lele, Arcanine, Garchomp, Metagross. This is actually, um, this is quite familiar to me because I actually used something very similar to this at US Nationals. Um, I actually had Tapu Fini over the Tapu Lele. But this should make things a bit interesting because the Psychic Terrain boosted attacks. From the Metagross, if it's like a weakness policy set, are going to be pretty strong. Even Choice Band would be very devastating here. So, yeah, this is going to be pretty interesting. I think I could probably just lead Smeargle plus the Slowpoke, which doesn't seem too bad here. And now Illegal does pretty well against my opponent's team if I'm able to get rid of the Metagross and it's not a Scarf Tapu Lele. Hmm... Um, yeah, like Garchomp's still a big threat. Um, yeah, Garchomp's a huge threat. Uh, Torko can sweep if I get rid of the Garchomp and Arcanine and get the weakness policy boost up. Um, what I want to do is I think I want to lead. I think I want to lead Slowpoke Smeargle. It just seems very solid in this matchup. And I think I want to have Torkoal in the back. The question is, do I want Nihiliko or do I want Hariyama? They're both pretty solid in the matchup. Um, I think I want to go Nihiliko just to try it out. Because I think Nihiliko could help here. Of course, I am obviously thinking about the potential for Garchomp to potentially beat me. If, you know, I lose two Pokemon easily and then Nihiliko's in Trick Room. And if it's not a Scarf Garchomp... Then Earthquake can destroy the rest of my team. So there is that to consider. Maybe Hariyama was the better call here, but I found Nihilig was just so good in this matchup. So we're gonna lead Smeargle plus Slowpoke against Tapu Koko plus Garchomp, which is okay here because that usually is that discharge then? Like the only reason I could see my opponent leading this is potentially discharge. Um Yeah, maybe I should have led like Smeargle Nihiligo. Um well, not much I can do here. I'm going to try to set up the Trick Room. And I think I'm going to go for... No matter what. It depends. It really depends on what kind of items these Pokemon hold. I'm going to go for Follow Me. But I'm pretty sure Discharge here. I completely forgot the potential output of Discharge here. So let's see if it's going to come to bite me right here. As we do go for the Follow Me here, we will see a Discharge. Yep. So that means it's probably Discharge and Rock Slide, I assume. Uh, Discharge is going to do so much damage to the Slowpoke. Yeah, bring my Smeargle to his Focus Ash. And then Earthquake or Rock Slide. Probably a Rock Slide. And we get Paralyzed on top of that too. Uh, double Paralyzed. I don't think it really matters on Smeargle. It might matter on the Slowpoke. But actually, we're going to see the Earthquake come out. Which actually isn't too bad for me. Because even though both my Pokemon do get KO'd here. Oh, Tapu Koko survives. Ah, so if I actually went for the Faint there, it might have actually been better here. But not exactly the best turn, obviously. I will go go out into my Torkoal and my Nihiligo here. I could potentially get two knockouts. However, both my Pokemon are going to be heavily damaged, it looks like. So, we get Nihiligo in as well as the Torkoal. And, uh, like, I don't like the position. I'm going to be taking a Life Orb. Well, not Life Orb. Probably Specs. I would have to assume that Specs, that damage output was just so much. I'd have to expect it to be Specs Discharge. I'm going to go for Eruption because it does knock out the top of Coco and hits anything. I want to switch in if Tapu Koko does decide to switch out. And I'll go for the HP Ice onto the Garchomp because it doesn't look like it is Scarf Garchomp. It does look like it specs Tapu Koko. This team is very offensive. Very offensive. So let's see what my opponent is going to do here. It's going to be the Discharge once again. So that makes sense. I'm hoping for no full paralysis or if there's a paralysis, please don't be a Nihiligo. No paralysis here. Great. So I do get the HP Ice off. I'll be able to knock out the Garchomp at least. So Garchomp goes down. I do get rid of Tapu Koko. However, I am heavily weakened. I do get a Beast Boost though, which could come into factor here. But if it's like something like Tapu Lele Metagross, yeah, I'm pretty sure this game would be over 
and then so eruption is going to come out into the Tapu Koko that is going to be able to pick up the knockout and since the Tapu Koko was most likely choice specs I would assume from the damage output it's not going to be choice specs to so unless it's choice scarf which would be bad for me anyway because the fact that it outspeeds me with psychic can just pick up some knockouts but Tapu Lele is going to come out and it's actually Arcanine, so maybe, 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 maybe there's a chance. Maybe there's a chance. Um, I guess it comes down to items. If it's Specs Lele, I mean, it's not Specs. Scarf Lele, I already lose here. I 100% already lose here. So, yeah, but if it isn't Scarf Lele, I do have a chance. Um, I would assume you want... I would assume you maybe double attack with both your Pokemon. Um... Let's see, what's more likely to win? If I slash bond the top of the Lele, Flamethrower is not going to be doing too much Arcanine. Maybe if I Flamethrower crit the Lele, I have a chance if it's frail. So I'm actually going to go for the Power Gem and the Arcanine and Flamethrower the top of the Lele. I feel like that's my best shot of winning here. As we will go for the Power Gem and knock out the Arcanine here. So Arcanine does go down. I'm assuming top of the Lele is just going to go for a Psychic into the Nihiligo slot. If I had Protect, maybe it would have been easier on the Nihiligo because I could go for maybe Protect Flamethrower on a double attack here. As we're going to see the Psychic going to come out, target down the Nihiligo. And I basically need Flamethrower to be able to pick up a knockout here. Otherwise, I am completely screwed. So Flamethrower is going to come up into the top of the Lele. Let's see. No crit and that does nowhere near enough damage. So we will be taking the uh, loss of the first game. Um, yeah, there were probably some plays I couldn't have better. Like once I saw the Garchomp. Oh, it's Psychium Z Lele. So I wonder what the item on Garchomp was. Maybe it was also Grounding Z. Maybe my opponent opting for double uh, Z Crystals in this game. But, hmm. Like it definitely wasn't a solve as Garchomp. It would go down to HPS. But yeah. Um... Yeah, maybe I should have automatically just went, like, anticipated the specs because I felt like if you're going to lead that, you're most likely definitely specs on, uh, well, not specs, discharge on top of Coco, and discharge on top of Coco really screwed me over. And the fact that it could live, so I'm guessing it was bulky specs on the top of Coco because of the fact that it lived the earthquake from the guard chomp, discharge was earthquake, was able to knock up the slow poke, and yeah, that's kind of like one of the downsides to not having, like, a fake out or wide guard on Smeargle. But not much I could do there. Maybe if I went for a uh, feint into the Tapu Koko, I might have been able to pick up the knockout with the feint and him going for Earthquake. Then I could have gotten Nihiligo in an okay position. However, no matter what, like the position was still pretty bad there because you could probably just go for Tectonic Rage plus Psychic into the Nihiligo slot uh, if you send out your Tapu Lele. And yeah, it's just not looking that great there because of the fact that you can get the knockout Nihiligo and then uh, Torkoal will struggle against both of them and like Tapu Lele and Garchomp can easily deal with Torkoal with Tectonic Rage, Shattered Psyche or even just boosted Psychics plus a fully healthy Arcanine in the back I don't think there's like much chances of me leading that so maybe I should let the um, Torkoal Lilligan mode because, or maybe the Nihiligo mode or Nihiligo would have been pretty nice I think maybe um, I was just too worried about the Mandibuzz so as we find red catcher for the United Kingdom 1447 rating yeah if I were to look back in the battle I think I could have led better but yeah it's just poor judgment on my part as yeah red ketchup is going to be our second opponent with the team of Tapu Koko Talonflame the Fable Espeon Golduck and Palisand I don't know exactly what this is but um I'm guessing it's like uh what is this exactly simple beam Oh, don't be simple being cosmic power, stored power, and minimize. Oh, um, oh no, that actually does look like what this is. Um, I do have follow me, which does prevent this kind of strategy, which is pretty good. Of course, there is a potential for taunt. I don't want to handle this. What moves where my hurry am again? Also, the fact that Nihiligo can also do really well in this matchup. Uh, let's see here. We are... Heavy Slam. Okay, so we can... Actually, Heavy Slam breaks the minimize... From my opponent because if my opponent goes for minimize heavy slam is guaranteed to connect and i believe does double the damage if i remember correctly so i think i'm gonna lead slowpoke plus the smeargle here because i do want to follow me because i don't want my opponent to set up early I have hariyama and torkoal in the back i could bring the nihiligo except i don't think nihiligo is that great here but we'll see how this game goes because looks like my opponent has some tricks up my well tricks up his or her sleeve 
And of course, we never underestimate our opponents here. Underestimate our opponents leads to your downfall. So let's see. Red catch up here with the team. Well, let's see what he's gonna he or she is gonna lead. So Slowpoke's Miracle from my side. Palisand and Golduck. So is this gonna be Surf coming out? I think I wanna go for a spore right away. Cloud9, so that does make sense. Uh, gets rid of all weather possibilities. I think I will go for the Trick Room here. I think I'll just go for the Spore, to be honest. Because even if you Simple Beam, it's not too bad. If you're going to go for Surf, well, you do a lot of damage to your Palisand. So I don't feel like it's too bad here. As Aqua Jet. Okay. That's not what I was expecting. I thought it would... Okay. Um, Water Shuriken is probably better in most cases. As we see the Weakness Policy come out. From the Palisand, and we will get a Spore off into the Palisand. So we will at least be able to put this Palisand to sleep. Nice, and the fact that Palisand doesn't have any um, damage output is really nice here, as I will be able to get the Trick Room up. Nice. And yeah, the only problem here is I don't want the Palisand to get, to get the first turn Wake on me switching in Torkoal potentially. So... Yeah, and also the fact that Golduck gets rid of my son. I just realized that. I think I want to weaken the Palisand a bit. So I'll go for the Surf here. Break my Sash. It doesn't matter since I'm pretty sure Aqua Jet's going to come out anyway. I'm just going to spore the Golduck here. As we're going to see the Aqua Jet into the Smeargle. And I'm guessing the Earth Power as Surf is going to come out. Do some damage. Uh, let's see if Slowpoke can actually do some damage. I mean, Aqua Jet did 20%. That's not bad damage at all. <laughs> If I'm being completely honest. Of course we are raising the physical defense out of this pile sand, but it doesn't really matter to me. What is that? That's an eject button. Okay. So unless this is top of Coco, I do put something to sleep. Guaranteed. So I'm alright with this turn no matter what. As Espeon is going to come out here. And that's going to magic bounce my thing, isn't it? It's going to magic bounce my thing. Yep. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Poor. No, 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 what the heck is this? Okay, okay, I think I have to pray for him not to earth power my slot. Yep, yeah. I'm praying him not to earth power the Smeargle since it's asleep, go for the Shadow Ball into the Slowpoke or stay asleep, both of those work too. So we get my Torkoal in. Do you stay asleep? We'll find out after the surf. I'm pretty sure it's the psych up strategy coming out now, and this is not looking good. I mean, this Palisand is really weakened now, which is pretty good, because Solar Beam will be able to pick up the knockout onto the Palisand here, which is good. Uh, let's see if he stays asleep, though. Of course, he's at plus six defense, plus two physical attack, special attack, and it's a Giga Drain. Okay, so that's not too bad, actually. Goes in the Slowpoke. Doesn't really do too much. And I'm guessing it's a stored power. Well, psych up, yeah. Psych up and then stored power. So this isn't looking too good. I don't know. It's leftovers on Espeon. So I honestly can't tell if my opponent will go for a switch in a Golduck, which would probably be the best play because I think Palisand might be able to take one. Or since you're already set up, you're going to just survive anyway. Actually, I can't Solar Beam here because of the fact that Golduck's Cloud 9 will eliminate the factor of the weather being up. So Solar Beam will be charging. So my best play here, no matter what, is to go for Eruption as Espeon protects. So if I get the Knockout Palisand here, it doesn't really matter because if I get the Knockout Palisand, that's basically game changing here. So let's see if we are able to knock out the Palisand. Please, Torkoal, this isn't boosted. This doesn't have special defense boost. So please knock out the Palisand. Nice, nice, okay. So, actually a cool play I could do is heal pulse the Espeon, which could get my Torkoal back health, uh, my Slowpoke back healthy. and Or I could just heal pulse the Torkoal on the most likely incoming height Aqua Jet. So I'm trying to think here, what's the better play? I think, just he I, think I could just knock out the Espeon with the plus two, to be honest. This is the last turn of Trick Room. If he gets a double protect, well, if he gets a double protect and I try to heal pulse the Espeon, doesn't really matter too much. So I'll go for the Eruption plus the heal pulse. Hope that Espeon doesn't get a double if he goes for it. Aqua Jet's going to come out, which is going to target down my Torkoal, but not really doing too much damage in the first place. And then, as always, heal up, heal up, heal up my Torkoal. 
but I'm honestly curious on this Espeon's investment. It might be able to survive a plus two eruption. It's not sun boosted. Don't don't forget that, people. It does knock out the Espeon, so that's one huge, huge factor right there. I wonder what that Golex item is. I wonder if it's Scarf, to be honest. I really just don't know. As Talonflame is going to be my opponent's last Pokemon. Okay. So Talonflame reveals itself. I will easily just Trick Room Protect here because even... Because one, I want to know what kind of item this a Golduck is carrying. Two, I get to... If Slowpoke goes down, I get a free switch into my Hariyama, which can then provide Fake Out Pressure, assuming this Talonflame doesn't carry Quick Guard, which is definitely potential here. Quick Guard is definitely a move that could come out. So we're going to Protect Torkoal here. Let's see what my opponent goes for. Will it be... Um, Super Sound Sky Shark, it looks like, which is okay here. Uh, if it knocks out Slowpoke, I already wasted your Z move, so that's not too bad here. And yeah, too bad I don't get to find any information about this Golduck unless I figure out, unless it goes for Aqua Jet again, then I would have to assume it's like Scarf or something. As uh, Super Sound Sky Shark, gonna target down my Slowpoke, and Slowpoke will go down. So Slowpoke will be going down. Oh, wait, it was ejected by the Golduck. And Slowpoke lives with one HP? Hello, the king. This is actually the king right here. Slowpoke is actually the king right here. So, um, yeah, I will go for heal pulse in case you try to brave bird, and I'll go for an eruption here. Eruption should still be doing a lot to town flame, breaks the gale wings, uh, does a lot of damage to the Golduck. So, no matter what, this is probably the best potential play that I have. As Aqua Jet is going to come out, that means I don't have to worry about Scald. I do have to worry about a Brave Bird though, but that's not too bad because of the fact that Eruption will still be able to come. It's Fly. <laughs> oh my lord. Okay, so Eruption's gonna come out. Target down this Golduck. And... Damage. Damage. Okay, Sun Fades unfortunately, which is not good. Uh, we do get Hariyama in. As we will go for, I think, a fake out into Golduck and Eruption. Yeah, because um, I'm pretty sure a Life Orb Faint can knock out the Golduck the next turn anyway, even if it does carry Protect. And since Priority Fly is going to come out, it's going to probably be tarring out my Torkoal. Yep, there's the Protect. Probably could have went for Faint Eruption there. But yeah, I don't feel like it really matters too much as Fly should be coming out here onto, I'm guessing, Torkoal. Yeah, Torkoal doesn't really do too much. And Eruption is going to come out, which breaks the Gale Wings on this Talonflame, which is absolutely huge here. So how much does this do? A Still a solid chunk. As we do get our Flame Orb ability, Flame Orb to activate, and we will be able to go for the Faint here onto the Golduck, and we will go for another Eruption. And I think Faint will be able to knock out the Golduck. I think Faint will. Um... Of course, maybe this Golduck is an investing attack, maybe since it has a Jack Spot and it's bulky. However, Aqua Jet shouldn't really be doing too much to Torkoal anyway. So let's see, Faint is going to be able to pick up the knockout onto Golduck. Nice. So this is a single target eruption coming out into the Town Flame. Shouldn't pick up the knockout, but if my opponent goes for something like a Brave Bird, or it just does pick up the knockout, that's some nice fried chicken right there. As Town Flame does go down, and we will be able to beat Red Ketchup. I'm sorry, but I don't like uh, I don't like ketchup on my chicken. But um, yeah, so we're gonna be able to pick up one <laughs> one win at least. Um, very interesting team. Uh, focused around that palace, and luckily my opponent didn't set up like an amnesia or earth powered my Torkoal slot because it would have been extremely bad. But hey, I had to take those risks right there. Um, yeah, after the <laughs> spore into the. Um, Espeon because the Golduck had a Jack's button. <laughs> but yeah, nice, nice, nice. Let us see if we can pick up a win in the third game as well. But yeah, looking back at that battle, I don't know, like, it really just came down to I did not know what to really expect. I expected, you know, some kind of setup with that Palisand, but I just didn't know if it would be like stockpile, uh, of course, Stockpile Simple Beam was an option. It had, yeah, there were just like so many options right there. There was Stockpile Simple Beam. There was like um, Amnesia. Yeah, there were just so many options, I think, for setting up, especially with that weakness policy, Amnesia and Stockpile. 
So we got Sun here who is using looks like the QR code of Marcus's invitational team from a long time ago. With Arcanine, Persian, Tapu Coco, Tapu Fini, Cartana, and the Snorlax. This is going to be an interesting one. I don't remember what the Persian was carrying unfortunately. Uh, actually Taunt doesn't really matter. Taunt really doesn't matter in the case. I'm guessing it's going to be Persian, Tapu Coco that's leading. Yeah, that's kind of what I assume here. So I think I'm actually going to go to Torkoal Lilligant mode. The Torkoal Lilligant mode does seem safe here in my opinion. And I'll go with... Trick Room, I can sweep him. But Hariyama seems pretty good here. And I think I want to go Nihiligo. Yeah, these seem like the four Pokemon that I really want to bring out. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a Persian Tapu Koko lead. Because you get to fake out a Smeargle or the Hariyama and go for the Thunderbolt. And if you do lead Persian plus Tapu Koko, I don't really have much to deal with that. So I feel like this is the best play because it puts my opponent in a disadvantage, disadvantageous position. Yeah, it's going to be Persian Tapu Koko. I knew it. I like how this guy's name is Sun, but I'm the one who's using it. So we got Torkoal Lilligant out as the lead here. And right here, I could go for the Bloom Doom and the Protect, which seems very safe here. Um, Yeah, to be honest, I think Bloom Doom. Plus Protect is very safe. Gigavolt Havoc most likely going to be coming out. Fake Out plus Gigavolt Havoc. Um, really don't want Tarko to be taking too much damage since my best answer to Cartana. So I'll go for the Bloom Doom into the top of Coco and a Protect here. Let us see what my opponent opts to go for. It's probably going to be Fake Out and Z Nature's Power, I would assume. Going to be going out into the Fake Out and the Lilligant, uh, Gigavolt Havoc and the Top of Coco. That, I mean, to Torkoal. That's what I'm basically expecting this turn. And unfortunately, I don't have Double Protect. So Fake Out is going to come target down the Lilligans as we're going to see yep, the Z. Yep, Nature's Power. So waste my opponent's Z move. However, this, gig this Gigavolt Havoc is still going to be doing a lot, probably 30% to um, Torkoal. And I can't knock out this, unfortunately I cannot knock out this Tapu Koko with like an after you eruption. Since I'm not char charcoal here, which is one of the weaknesses of having the Tarkoal Lilligant mode on this team. It just, uh, Tarkoal doesn't do as much damage here. So that's a lot more than expected actually. Um, gonna be able to go for, I guess, a Flamethrower into the Persian slot. Although I'm pretty sure Tapu Fini... Uh, I'm not sure Tapu Fini would come in, maybe the Snorlax, but I'm going to go for the Bloom Doom right here into the Tapu Koko and try to pick up the Knockout and Flamethrower the Persian because I'm pretty sure it's going to be a Parting Shot, maybe a Protect here from the Tapu Koko, but a Leaf Storm follow-up should still be able to knock out Tapu Koko, or I could just follow him uh, after you Flamethrower the following turn if you go for Parting Shot into Lilligan. So, Tapu Koko going to Protect here. I could have potentially just Leaf Stormed right there. That is definitely a potential. And Gary Persian would have actually been nice because I don't have to worry about Fake Out as much. But we will go for the Bloom Doom here. And the question is I don't remember what kind of Snorlax this was on the team. I don't remember if it was Curse or Belly Drum. We will go for the Bloom Doom here. Which should be able to do I think 30 to 40% onto this Tapu Koko. And I don't really have to worry about Snorlax because I still have my Hariyama with the Guts Boosted Flame Orb later. Taunt's going to come out, so that's fine here because I get a Flamethrower and a Persian, which is going to do a lot of damage. It shouldn't pick up the Knockout because we're not Charcoal, but it's going to probably activate the Berry. Should do 80. Oh, was it not Berry? I thought it was Berry. Okay. So I get to go for the Eruption plus Leaf Storm because I will go for this play because it does pick up the knock on top of Coco and catches Cartana on the switch in potentially. And Eruption will still be able to knock out the Persian no matter what. So I don't see a reason not to. And of course I could flame throw the Persian, but what if Top of Coco switches out to Cartana? Um which, you know, it's very unlikely. It really is very unlikely here. But you know, there's always that chance. I can't go for after you or sleep powder. It wasn't like I was going to click Sleep Out on Electric Terrain anyway, but my opponent most likely wants to stop the After You potential. As Leaf Storm does connect with his Top of Coco, so I do at least get rid of Top of Coco, which is great here. And, you know, that's going to lower my special attack, but, you know, Lilligan can always switch out to reset that later. As Parting Shot is going to come out and target down the Torgo slot. Okay. Uh, Call Mine Top of Fini might be a bit annoying. However, we do have our Nihiligo, so it's not too bad. 
what's going to come out. I'm pretty sure Tapu Fini. I could Solar Beam that slot, but I don't want to make a risky play. As yeah, Snorlax is going to come out, which was kind of what I was expecting more here. As Eruption is going to come out into that Pokal slot and do Snorlax slot and probably do... Yeah, that wasn't really much. I thought I would do a bit more. But then again, we are weakened. We're not Charcoal boosted and um, we're minus one. So Persian's going to come back out again. I think I'll just go for the Leaf Storm. Uh, I don't think I want to go for Leaf Storm, actually. I think Fake Out's going to go out into one of these slots, but I can't tell who. I kind of want to Leaf Storm the Persian and just switch into my Hariyama here because when I get the Guts Boost to the fact is if Persian still uh, decides to Fake Out Lilligan, I at least am able to pick up the Knockout the following turn. And... Yeah, that's basically what I'm looking for. Either knocking out Persian this turn or next turn. I want something that can outspeed Persian and Leaf Storm it for the knockout. And I'm pretty sure Leaf Storm, even at minus two, should still be able to knock out the Persian. Although, yeah. Like, I really think it will. I, f I think this Persian was like max special defense, but I still think it will be able to knock it out. So we get Hariyama and Bakeout's going to come out into the Lilligan slot. So I could have Eruption switched down to Hariyama. But, you know, we're okay here as the curse is going to come out for my opponent here. So that is going to raise the Snorlax's attack and defense. However, the Snorlax is already taking chip damage, and now we have our Guts Hariyama out. And now what I can do is go for a close combat into that Snorlax slot and a Leaf Storm. Since it's Taunt Persian, it can't quash or anything. Well, not like quash would really matter unless like Snorlax maybe sets up another curse or something. But yeah, my opponent's pretty much trapped here. I think you have to sack one of your Pokemon. Like Snorlax could switch out to potentially Tapu Fini. Um, no matter what this is looking like a very advantageous position for me because of the fact now i'm going to be able to get a leaf storm off into this persian which you know if it connects i'm able to pick a knockout persian as nice we should be able to pick a knockout i would assume nice so persian goes down which is great here i'm able to get the close combat into snorlax and we definitely outspeed because of the curse here comes the close combat this is guts boosted so the curse boost is negated and we will be able to knock out the Snorlax. So it's going to be down to my opponent's last Pokemon. Uh, if it's Kartana, we have HP Fire plus Torkoal in the back. If it's Tapu Fini, we have Lilligant that can switch out. Torkoal to lower the damage of Muddy Water as well as the Nilego in the back. And what was the other Pokemon my opponent could have? Uh, Arcanine, we have Nilego. So it's going to be Kartana as my opponent's last Pokemon here. And... It doesn't really matter. I can just close combat here. I can set, uh, just go out into my Torkoal, to be honest, because once Lilligan speeds up, we'll be able to go for the HP Fire in the Sun. We'll be able to knock out the Kartana, and that will be a good game no matter what. So, yeah, my opponent really can't do anything. Uh, Razor Leaf won't win my opponent the game. There's pretty much nothing that can really win my opponent the game, even if you're able to pick up the knockout on both these Pokemon right now. Like, Lilligan will still win in the end. So let's see, Leaf Blade's going to come out probably into Hariyama. Yep, so Hariyama is going to be going down to that Leaf Blade. Critical hit. Um, Don't think that mattered, really. It might have, but I don't think it did. It's Adamant Kartana, too, if I remember correctly. Adamant, no attack investment, if I remember correctly. We will go into Lilligant. I could after the Eruption, or I could go for the Hidden Power. And I think this game, I might as well use the Hidden Power Fire, because we do have it. So we'll go for the Hidden Power Fire into Kartana. As well as an eruption, and that will be a good game. So nice. We are able to pick up two wins in this today's episode. Hidden Power Fire will be able to finish off this Kartana. Outspeed it. I don't care if you're a max special defense Kartana. You are going down. And we are able to pick up the win in the third game. So I hope that everyone enjoyed today's episode of VGC 17 Backstreet Bows. If you did, please leave a like down below because it really does show your support. As well as you can check out my other stuff on the YouTube channel. As well as side series which are should have been resuming by now. As well as the social medias I have linked down below. My Twitter, my Twitch channel. Twitch channel. Really looking to start up streaming sometime in the next few days. So look forward to that. As well as you can check out the QR code team. Or if you want to go get Drake Kappa follow. You can definitely do that down below. And yeah. If you think anyone you know would enjoy this video. Feel free to share it with them. And yeah. I'm looking forward to reading the comments down below. Feel free to leave a comment down below. And hope you have a good day people. And I will see you around in another video.